The modern thoroughbred averages between 15-1 to 16-2 hands and from 950 to 1,200 pounds. The thoroughbred is the result of over 300 years of selective breeding. Racehorses make their living on the move, not standing still. The worth of any horse is enhanced because of his ability to do the job he is supposed to do, and this is especially true of the racehorse. The first thing to hit the ground and therefore receive a lot of pressure is the foot or hoof. Some common ailments of the foot are rotated cough and bone, navicular disease, corns, abscesses, founder and quarter cracks. The foot next to the ankle is the one area on a horse that can have the most problems. Here we have the coronet, which is where the foot meets the pastern, the area that ring bone may occur. Next is the ankle, with the back of the ankle being referred to as the fetlock. The ankle and fetlock are where ocelots and other chips, fractures, and calcium deposits can hinder a horse. This is the distal phalanx or coffin bone, also known as the pedal bone. This is the area in which side bone occurs, the ossification of the two lateral cartilages of the wings of the coffin bone the middle phalanx or short pastern, the area affected by low ring bone. You may want to check your winner's way manual for the clinical signs of that degenerative joint disease. The proximal phalanx, high ring bone would be found between the joints of the long and short pasterns. Sesamoid bone. The sesamoid bones are two small bones on the back of the fetlock joint which form part of the suspensory apparatus. The third metacarpal bone or cannon bone. This is the area where buck shins occur to young horses. The second and fourth metacarpal bones or splint bones. The second metacarpal bone is the inside splint bone and the fourth is the outside splint bone. The first and fifth metacarpal bones have been lost during the evolution of the horse. The navicular bone sits directly behind the coffin bone. Navicular is considered a syndrome rather than a disease because there are probably multiple causes for pain in the navicular bone. The above bones are likely to be found in your trainer's test. A more detailed view of the entire skeletal system of the horse can be found in other Winner's Way material. Continuing on, we have the knee which houses the carpal bones. Knees are also a very vulnerable area because they endure much impact. Therefore, you see many chips in the knees. Also in young horses, the knees should be monitored closely by x-ray or fluoroscope to determine their development before any excessive training. The top part of the horse's leg above the knee, but below the girth area, is the forearm. Going on to the rear limb and working our way down, we have the stifle. There are problems with the stifle joint and usually it is a displaced stifle. Going down, we have the gaskin. Oftentimes, any injury in the gaskin area is a muscle pull. The rear joint at the knee height is the hock. Many times, there are chips or similar problems in this hock area. Down from the hock, everything is the same as with the front leg. The rear end of the horse is the driving force, while the front legs take the abuse of the landing. Most problems of the racehorse are in the front end, although many times a racehorse will develop rear end problems.